right, here we are. Now it's much better. There we go. Uh, Nikita, welcome Great. to the podcast for, for the first time. I feel like uh, you and I have been chatting back and forth, it seems like, a couple of years at this point, a year and a half at least, um, through different courses and right. different things we've done. So um, welcome, welcome to the podcast, man. Well, thanks for having me, Z. It's, uh, it's my honor, and it's my first time being on a podcast ever. Oh, I love it. I love it. Uh, I've, I've had quite a few people that I invited for the first time. So I'm, I'm glad you're here. Cool. Um, dude, you have a you have a pretty uh, amazing story about um, going from, you know, oh, man, so much of the so much of the legal stuff and going from one country to another and building products now and all this other stuff. Uh, can you give me a little bit of background and what, for everyone that's listening I mean, you're building all sorts of cool, like AI type products right now, and and all that. So, um, give us give us a little bit of background on your on your history. Um, living, you're in Russia right now, right? Yeah, and um, <clears throat> I was a diplomat for six and a half years, and I ended up being a diplomat after not being very intentional during my college years. And like many people, I found myself um, in the final year, not knowing what what's next. Okay. And then it turned out that the only viable and money wise uh, path was to be a diplomat, at least for some time. Um, but I always knew that uh, I just need to make enough money to be able to start my business. Uh, and that's what I did. And it took six and a half years, so way longer than I expected. But I got there and I was, well, my first three years were kind of nightmare in Moscow. Um, really hated my job. Um, just a lot of red tape and uh, paperwork. Um, and then I spent three and a half years in Houston where I had much more fun met a lot of people. I was a visa officer and as a visa officer, I met tons of people, practiced my English a lot and got to know the country very well. And that allowed me to start a business in the United States um, as soon as I quit my job there. Yeah. I, I returned to Russia uh, for financial reasons, mostly, because I'm going to start a business. I knew it might take time and I would make mistakes, which 100% happened. <laughs> so you, uh, I wanted to be somewhere you, where I could li just leave a, on, live on the cheap. Nice, nice. Just a question for you really quickly. Can you explain for people that don't really understand, uh, what, what does it mean when you're a diplomat? What does that entail on your life? What does that do uh, on like for your for what you can do, what you can't do, what you, you know, like, what, what, is the, what does it mean to be a diplomat? Yeah, it can mean a lot of things, actually, uh, because uh, you know, being in a foreign service, uh, there are multiple roles that you can be in. So... Mostly that means that you have a ton of restrictions, like you can't start a business on, on the side. Um, you can only be paid by your one and only employer. Um, when you're abroad posted, uh, then you can only travel where you're allowed to travel. Like, for example, when I was in Houston, there was a 25 mile zone that I wasn't allowed to leave without um, 72 hour notice. Um, and I couldn't travel around the US that easily. I was I was able to, but it wasn't easy. Uh, but you also get a ton of perks, like uh, the government pays for your um, apartment, for your car, you don't get taxed like at all. Uh, and there are also like minor perks that you meet people that you wouldn't um, otherwise meet. And for me, it meant uh, 
meeting people who needed a visa in my case and that I wouldn't ever be able to meet otherwise. Um, people from, uh, with business backgrounds, especially what I valued most when I was there, because I knew I wanted to start a business and, um, I was actively looking for contacts and friends in that area. And, uh, that's what I did. Uh, I was, I was able to find people who still serve as mentors and friends to this day. Nice. And what, what, uh, what did you go to school for? What was your, um, what was your role in school? What did you study? International relations. And this is, oh, wow. this is how you okay. become a diplomat. So it started with a, with my infatuation with history, um, in high school. And then I got into college and, um, co continued on that path. Um, just transformed into international relations. And that meant also a lot of language training. Um, so I spent four years studying Dari, which is Afghan. Um, also studied Persian, Arabic, Spanish, and Polish. Um, but at this point, I Dude, only those remember, are not easy. I only, those are I only not use, easy language. Those are. I only use English. Uh, no, and I've say, gotten everything. Oh else. yeah, <laughs> those are not easy languages to take on. That's crazy. That's insane. They're not. In, um, in, in the in the case of Dari, I wasn't. The, no, nobody asked me if I wanted to learn those. Uh, they just gave it to me because the government paid for my tuition. Oh, wow. That's crazy. So what does your day to day as like uh, uh, a diplomat look like um, when it comes to just your day to day, like work that you did or, or anything like that? What, give me give me like a day or something that you can remember that you were doing. I, I'd love to know like a little bit of an example. Yeah. So in Houston, uh, that was a um, very typical office job, um, not very different from what most Americans would experience. And so I got into the office that I had to uh, work on visa applications uh, for an hour or so. Then I get a ton of emails with people asking how to get visas or specific questions about their documents. Then a lady from the visa center, um, who is our contractor that handles all the application applications comes in and then I work through all the, all those applications and we then start working with them, uh, with my team. So I was, I was the head of the visa department and I had from at various points from one to three people, um, working with me as my assistants and that that depended mostly on the time of year because eh, most people go to Russia in the summer and that's that's all you do is visas uh, but in winter you just get like uh, a few applications a day and that's it so um, that was a lot of paperwork um, a lot of bureaucracy but I was fortunate to also occasionally get people who would personally come in to the consulate to hand in their documents and then I would talk to them. And of course I had to occasionally call people, ask them questions about their tra travels to Russia. And that's how I got to know a few people uh, as well. And also got some travel opportunities because of that. And Apart from visas, I would I would do like regular bureaucratic office paperwork um, like internally uh, relevant, but totally irrelevant in the grand scheme of things, because uh, that paperwork just doesn't doesn't move any needle. It doesn't help anyone. And that, that was one, one reason I hated that job. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, tell me about tell me about uh, when you went back to Russia about starting your your first business and why you uh, 
why you went back um, for whatever it is, financial reasons, family, it doesn't matter. Um, and what kind of kicked you off? What, what was the kind of starting point to starting that first business? And, and what was that business? If you can give me a little bit on that. Yeah, that business was Brick, uh, which is my uh, planning app for solopreneurs. Uh, it helps you visualize your projects instead of having a bunch of to-dos that are overwhelming and hard to execute on. And I started because I scratched my own itch. Um, I wanted to start a business uh, back in uh, the in fall 2020. Um, and instead of, you know, planning a business, I started a planning app. <laughs> um, I made like all the mistakes. Uh, I, I took like months to write a detailed business plan that I would later just toss <laughs> because it was complete garbage. Uh, and my decision to come to Russia was because, uh, a, uh, I had a six months old baby. Well, it was, he was a uh, one year old by, by that time. Uh, and he had never seen his, uh, grandmas and grandpas, uh, because of the pandemic at that point. Uh, and this, so we needed help, uh, me and my wife. Uh, we lived with him for a year without any any help from uh, grannies or nannies. And the second reason was that uh, it's way cheaper than pretty much anywhere else that you can live in the West. And that was that was reasons enough for us to to be here. It made sense. And I was glad to, I was glad that I quit in May 2021 because after, after February 2022, that would be much harder because quitting, quitting, uh, right now, uh, is, uh, is often a problem for people, not just politically, um, but organizationally as well. Well, it's a lot of. A lot of difficulty, but for me, it was, it was a good decision and I knew I wanted to start a business being in Russia, but a business should not be in Russia. Uh, I, I started the business in the United States. I incorporated in Texas. Um, and one reason for that was that I didn't want the Russian government to, uh, reach my business in any um, shape or form. And that was a great decision because after the war started, started I was able to keep the, the business running despite a lot of issues. Uh, but if I were here, um, I would had, I would probably not be able to get paid for what I do. Wow. Wow, yeah, that's because crazy. the banking system and, is and, completely uh, cut off. Wow, that's insane. And how do you, so how do you now, so you have your everything in the U.S., like bank accounts and everything is in the U.S. How do you transfer money to yourself? Or like, do you just use like the card from here over there? How does that work in terms of, in terms of that whole system? Yeah, I have uh, both personal and business and bank accounts in the U.S., and, okay. and I have n absolutely no way to transfer that money to Russia. Um, it just <laughs> it doesn't work anymore. Wow. You can't you can't do that. So um, I, I'm still living off of my savings mostly uh, because my business are not that profitable at the moment. Uh, and even if they were profitable. Uh, I wouldn't be able to touch that money all that much because uh, what I make in the U.S., I cannot spend in Russia because those um, right. the, uh, the credit cards uh, from outside Russia don't work in Russia and the mm. Russian credit cards don't work elsewhere. And there's no way to wire uh, money between Russia and anywhere else pretty much. So That's yeah, insane. there's a lot That's of complexity crazy. and crazy to... my, my only hope is that one day uh, I just get out of here and 
get to use it. Yeah, is it is it your goal uh, ultimately is to get out of uh, at some point leave Russia and come live in the U.S. or somewhere else? Yes, um, it's stressful to live here. Um, there are a lot of you know uh, there's a there's difficulty everywhere uh, politically, especially if you're not a big fan of the war. Um, there are a lot of business complexities that I just talked about. Um, but there's still a lot, a lot to love here that most people outside don't, don't even know about. Like there are innovative businesses here. There are a lot of business opportunities here as well, even though I don't use them all that much. Um, there are very educated people here that are world-class in what they do. Um, there's food that you will not find anywhere else. Um, uh, and there is nature that you will not find anywhere else. And there are cities, um, especially big ones, uh, that are world-class and a lot of, uh, the, a lot of the things that you come to expect from, uh, the West, but not Russia like top level restaurants that you've never heard about in America, but, uh, and like theaters, um, all that, all those things about culture, um, the, those will be missed. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's crazy. And, and, um, Tell me how how it is now with uh, with running. I know you started also another like little side business called Indie Plans. Um, right. What what is that? What is uh, what does that look like for you? So are you you have a co founder with Brick, from what I understand, when we last talked, right. and now mm-hmm. you're doing Indie Plans by yourself. Um, so amongst those two things, and you also started. When did you start more like writing online and kind of doing that side of things, like to to really start marketing your products? Is that something that you were always trying to do or is it something that you kicked off more recently, like in 2020 or whenever you started Brick? Um, yeah. Uh, so for <clears throat> online writing, I only started in November uh, 2022. And before that, I had a blog, uh, which I started in... 2021 um and that w- that was a newsletter called the bricklayer and that was uh my take on productivity and that fizzled out um pathetically because um well first i i couldn't find an audience for that uh and secondly um i made all the rookie mistakes like um writing uh, about a topic that I was temporarily interested in, but that wasn't you know, long-term aligned with what I want to do. And for some reason, it took me 51 issues <laughs> to to realize that something wasn't working. And I had like 48 subscribers after 51 issues. Um, and it took me 18 months to realize that this wasn't really working, so I quit. It, had t- it, it, it had taken a lot of my time. Like uh, at first, when I started, I would I could e- easily spend like twenty hours writing a single newsletter issue, um, and it it was it was long and boring and not something that I myself would read right now. But that taught me about what actually matters in, in writing. And I understood that I, I picked a heavy lift right away and that, that was a big mistake. So then I started on Twitter in November, 2022 and on Twitter as well, I made all the mistakes and the journey has been very slow. Um, and right now I'm, uh, I'm on, on Twitter and LinkedIn um, I started being active on LinkedIn just um, a couple weeks ago. Um, finally have um, enough 
Kanad ideas in me to keep it consistent, more or less, and make the most of it uh, with the, with the lessons that I learned in the past um, year that I've been writing online. As for your indie plans question, um, I actually have four four businesses going on right now. Indie plans is uh, the latest, uh, so it works. Uh, we still use the the company that I use for Brick, uh, the one incorporated in Texas. Um, but since I'm the the only founder here, uh, we just use the, a profit sharing agreement there, so that I get uh, the full share of what I make from Indie Plans. And my other business is a, a prompt writing business. Uh, called Propnik.com. Um, but that that one it mostly doesn't use the brick infrastructure because it's it's a freelance business and I can get paid uh, to my personal bank account um, bypassing brick because I don't well, people are fine <laughs> working with you as a freelancer and using your personal bank account. Um, yeah, and that's 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 how I make it work, and hopefully, um, well, Brick will still um, serve as my infrastructure for the businesses that I have in mind and already working on. Very nice, very nice. And what uh, when you when you started working with some of the AI stuff? Because I know you're doing a lot of the prompting and the indie plans and everything like that. What kind of triggered mm-hmm. you uh, into into stepping into AI and, um, and and that whole thing? Like, what was it about that that you were like, hey, I really need to? Because, I mean, you basically spun off two businesses. You know, I know you integrated AI into like Brick as well to, to kind of mm-hmm. uh, uh, speed that up a little bit, make it more efficient. But what was it about like that moment when you found how effective AI can be that you're just like, I need to double down on this? Did you have the? Yeah, did you have a certain uh, spark in that moment? Yeah, I started dabbling right after uh, ChatGPT came out, and I liked it because it gave me ideas that would never cross my mind otherwise. Uh, well, that was fun, and I took a few courses to level up, and i i used it um, I, I used AI to help with my personal productivity mostly and business ideation a lot. Uh, but then the real, the real trigger for, you know, um, making AI um, my, my theme, if you will, uh, was after I realized that I can get, I can replace people with it. <laughs> Um, I was, uh, I was making a lot of mistakes at, at the time and I was like for my, for my newsletter, I was paying an editor because I thought, okay, I, I'm, I'm not a native speaker. I need an editor. So my, my writing actually sounds English. So uh, I have a startup Then I need a, I need a designer like illustrations, um, UI and Twitter banners and whatnot. Uh, I need a designer for that. Uh, and then I, I, I paid all those people. And then I realized, wait a minute, I can just write a good prompt and I no longer need an editor. And if I write an even better prompt, I, I can even replace a designer in some situations. Like, for example, I have uh, like brick only has a dark theme, and then at some point I realized that that was a mistake because most people prefer the light one. But we started with a, with a with a dark one for some reason. But then I, I realized I didn't want to pay another five hundred dollars to a designer to fix that. So I just went to ChatGPT, said that, "Well, you are a designer now. Um, here's what the app is all about." Here are the colors that we use and what we use those for. Now you suggest new colors for the light theme. Uh, and it did, and it sucked. And then like, we worked more, and suddenly it stopped sucking. 
it, it became good. And now we have uh, an actually fun uh, light theme ready to go. Uh, that looks fine. And I, I, that, and that I got in like two or three hours chatting with chat GPT and spending exactly zero. And then I realized that, uh, I helped people with their prompts for a while, but it never crossed my mind that this could be a business as well. So in November, um, I put up. Uh, a quick landing page for prompt Nick and started offering services for prompt writing. And by now I got two clients and that helped me pay the bills uh, with something that I've done for a long time, but didn't realize this could be a business. That's awesome. That's really awesome. There's so much power in the in the whole prompt engineering side of things nowadays, especially because if you know what you're talking about and you know how to explain things and know what you're trying to get out of it, um, it's really, really powerful to be able to use uh, AI on that front. And I've been tapping into it a little bit more and I'll share with you some stuff off uh, off the podcast, what, what I'm kind of dabbling with in the mm -hmm. background. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's really, really awesome. And there's just so much so much that can be tapped into whether it's like writing ideas, business ideas, whatever that might be. Um, let me ask you really quickly, what have you learned through this kind of journey of writing on Twitter and LinkedIn? And you said you've been, it's been pretty slow for you, like the growth and things like that. What's been, what were those kind of key moments where you just realized like what you kind of had to stick to and what you had to do in order to continue, keep it going. Cause it can be very, um, it, it could be very like energy, like sucking when it, when you just don't get anywhere, your stuff's not getting out there. You're not getting, especially if you're trying to run a business and market your business. And there's just so many different things that pull you in so many different directions. What's been kind of that point where you're like, I just need to kind of stick to this, be consistent, continue to like do what I'm doing. Cause I noticed that you've been putting out a lot more like videos and different things like that. So what, what was that moment where you just felt like, Hey, I just need to kind of keep going with this. Well, I'm, for some reason, I'm just naturally very good at keeping going. And that's uh, not a good thing um, a lot of the time. Um, because as you remember from my um, newsletter fiasco, um, I, <laughs> I stuck to it for way longer than I should have. Um, so here as well, um, I started writing on Twitter um, in November 2022. And it, it went pretty well at first. Um, like for a beginner. Um, but then it slowed down, especially after uh, the change of leadership um, on Twitter. And I, I not, not, not only because of that, because of my own mistakes as well. Uh, but anyway, I, I was good at staying consistent. I would just tweet once a day or twice a day. Um, and I could do that reliably just because um, I have that discipline in me. Uh, but beyond that, discipline is not enough. You need like quality. You need um, you need to have direction, and that's something I lacked a lot. And this uh, the time that I've been on Twitter, uh, I think I've changed my direction like four or five times, like <laughs> complete change of direction. So first I, I wrote about productivity. Then I just switched to writing about whatever I was building. And now I mostly condensed that to um, AI plus no code plus uh, building businesses with, with those skills. Um, so how I came to that, was pretty not straightforward. Um, so AI fi finally gave me an opportunity to build apps on my own because I'm not a coder and I hate being dependent on coders. Um, I was unhappy with my co-founder for a long time because he was not fast enough 
But here I can suddenly build whole apps with no code, with AI, which you can coax to do whatever you want just with natural language. And if you combine that with no code tools and automations uh, like make.com and Zapier uh, and Bubble, then you can suddenly be a self-sufficient maker without depending on anyone. And so I read about that. I, I, I see people who, like me, are not fond of, are not enthusiastic about learning to code because it's really difficult. I tried that. I abandoned that. And I don't enjoy that. And I don't want to do that. And there are a lot of people like me, but they still want to build apps. And they don't realize that now is a very good time to do that because with AI, you can talk in natural language that you already know. You don't have to learn anything. And prompt engineering is way easier than coding. And secondly, if you are, if you're not an idiot, you, you can build anything with automation tools. Uh, you don't, you don't have to be a genius to do that. And I'm, I'm not a genius by any means, but I built a few tools with just those, uh, skills and I'm just getting started and um, I think that by showing people that they have this power now, and most people don't realize they do, especially when they're not coders, um, it's very liberating. And uh, I love that when I can show people that they they can do so much now with just a little uh, just a little effort and um, focus. It's a it's a game changer, absolutely, and I and I see that as well. Like I, yesterday, I was coming. I had an idea about like a, like a little app thing that was wanted to build, and literally uh, went to ChatGPT. I wrote out a whole like basically like a. I, I come from a project management background, so I can like layer out things pretty cleanly. Like, hey, this is what it needs to do. This is what I need. Blah blah. blah. And I was like, and I want to build this in bubble. And it gave me literally a step-by-step -step process on how to build it. So like, you still need mm -hmm. a little bit of that background in terms of how you, how you need to know what data types are. You need to know some of the knickknacks, but that stuff, you can still ask it, like explain what data types are. What should I, so you can still dig in, keep digging in. And I think that's really where it, uh, where people I think either fall off because they're like, I don't want to go that deep because it doesn't interest me. But then when you get into it and you realize like once you do it once or twice or three times, it just like kind of clicks in your head and you're just like, oh, shit. Because I always had this, I always had this thing. If I was with my ideas and if I had the developer brain, I wanted to sit down and do one thing. I could have literally made bazillion apps by now, but I just never really enjoyed the development piece of things. Like I, that just wasn't right. me. To me, it's like, I have the idea, I have the use case, I know what to do with it. Somebody else should like build this type of thing. So yeah, it's, it's pretty fascinating. Where do you, where do you see kind of AI over the next few years? Like when you, when you work within it so much now and you're using it all the time, what's your kind of prediction of where that's all going at the moment? Or do you have anything where you're just like, Hey, like this is, this is getting crazy. Like, I don't even know what, where it's going. Yeah, I have um, trouble keeping up. <laughs> I, I use AI all the time, and it's very hard to keep up. Like with all the tools that I don't, I don't want to try uh, because there are too many of them, uh, and the models getting better, faster than I can keep track, and that makes me fearful. <laughs> Because uh, if I can't keep up, then it it gets it gets overwhelming. Um, but I think I'm I'm learning to ignore uh, a lot of the noise uh, by now, and like I don't check all the all the tools that you can find in 
10 daily threads about the the 50 AI tools that you got to try right now. Um, And my thoughts about the future of AI and today. Um, I, I, I don't I don't like to think about what's next. I understand that probably at some point AI will not need prompt engineers because it will write itself. Um, it will be smarter than I am. It will guess uh, what I need um, right away. And it will just do create, conjure up, anything that you can think of in moments. But I'm happy we're not there yet. And it's the moment where the AI, where AI shines together with a person that wields it. Because right now, you, you cannot make AI do wonders for you. Uh, you have to add your own spark. Like, for example, if we take a practical practical example in deep plans that I just uh, launched uh, less than a month ago. Um, like before that, I, ne- I just needed a business plan. Uh, that's all. And uh, I remembered my, uh, my failure in 2020 writing a business plan for two, two months. And then, and then it was useless in the end. So I went online and browsed uh, available AI business plan generators, and they all suck big time because they attempted to uh, build a business plan on just a few pretty irrelevant pieces of information about you, like your business name. Like, w- what if my business name is Airbnb? How 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 do you how do you guess what I do? <laughs> what if it's perplexity? Uh, what does perplexity do? How do you know? Uh, so. If you want to build um, a good business plan generator, in my case, you have to know what actually matters in, in the business plan. And AI will not tell you that. It, it will. You can ask it, but it will give you a lot of good answers, but a lot of bad answers as well. And if you don't know the first thing about business, then you will probably mix it all up together and get a mediocre result. So uh, in my situation, um, I had just enough experience and just enough uh, books, highlights from my Kindle to make it work. I knew what was important in business plans, and I'm, I'm pretty confident I built the best business plan generator on the internet because it's completely personalized. It does the job way better than anything else out there. I just need to learn to market it. And when I think about AI, I understand that whatever your space, you cannot make AI do the job for you. It has to, you have to understand what's important and you need to give direction. If you don't know the direction, don't understand what you want and what's important in your business, AI will not help you. And outstanding results come right now from a combination of a person who know who knows a thing or two about his space and ability to wield AI very well. And I'm happy for that because n- not a lot of people can do that very well. And in the future, I'm pretty confident AI will handle all that on its own, but it's not here. And I don't want to speculate uh, when it will happen, but I'm confident it will. Uh, But I want to just make the most of the opportunity that I have right now. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah, I definitely think it's more like working with you than a for you type of thing. Uh, it does right. some of the for you work on the back end, but it's mostly on the, uh, you know, you, you have to kind of, like you said, the, the prompt engineering and everything. Um, what's the what what's kind of the next uh, step here? Are you more more? How are you dividing up your time between some of these businesses? Is it all working kind of 
uh, cohesively together in one way or another? Or do you feel like you've had to like take time away from like brick to put it into this and different things? Because I know we only uh, all have a finite amount of time and bandwidth and all this other stuff. And you have a family and all this. So how do you how do you balance that uh, side of things? Yeah, when I mentioned that, I, I realized at some point um, uh, last year that I can build things um, on my own. Um, I was a bit <clears throat> uh, over ecstatic and started building things at <laughs> incredible pace. And uh, I ended up with um, seven products um, made in one year. And I realized that wasn't sustainable. Um, so two of them didn't get traction, so I killed them um, easily. Uh, but another one was pretty promising, uh, but I understood that um, it was probably going to be a little heavier lift than I would prefer at the moment. Uh, that was a parody camp. Uh, I, I took the website offline already, but uh, in short, it was a, it was an idea to build now. Um, uh, parity deals for the App Store, basically uh, parity pricing for App Store apps. And this niche is completely empty and potentially very profitable. Uh, but I couldn't make time, so I just I just killed it. And right now, I'm focusing on making the four businesses that I have left work. Um, and the way I see it is that Indie Plans, which writes business plans, um, works very well with Brick. Brick is made for solopreneurs to help it helps them plan things, and Brick can promote Indie Plans, and Indie Plans can promote Brick because they are very much adjacent to one another. Um, Promptnik, which which is my freelance business, uh, it puts foot on the table and. It's not that hard to manage because there's no like, tech infrastructure apart from the website, which is just a one pager. Um, it, it takes a lot of uh, marketing effort, sure, but uh, still, I, I can handle that. Um, and my fourth business is something I'm trying to. Um, it's not live yet. We're working on it and. Um, stealth mode for now. Uh, it's a medical thing. Um, so the, the point here is that it was accidental. Um, it was, I'm partnering up with, uh, with a coder and a dentist who specializes in um, uh, oral, oral medicine um, and oral ulcers specifically. And we're building an app for food diaries. It's a food diary, uh, and it has a ton of AI in it. Um, my thinking here is that when you're part of the big indie hacker community on Twitter, it's, uh, it's a very common mistake that you start building for indie hackers. And so brick is for solopreneurs, which by extension, are often indie hackers. Business plans, uh, I also target mostly bootstrap teams, which are partly indie hackers as well. Um, and Promptnik is an AI thing, which is pretty often targeted at indie hackers as well. And I don't wanna be constrained by this niche and it's not re nearly the only one worth pursuing. And so this opportunity came in and it was a great combination of um, a breath of fresh air, a different niche combined with uh, my strength in AI um, because I, I can build uh, great um, food diary analysis AIs that will blow anything that's on the market just out of the water uh, because it doesn't exist. Uh, like there are food diary apps that 
um, like has have AI in it, but what it does is like it generates text and summaries for you. And what are those for? <laughs> Our app will do actually useful things like um, the most important one being finding connection between people's symptoms and foods they eat, which is a huge problem for a lot of people, like people with um, oral ulcers, uh, oncology, uh, rheumatology, um, a lot of um, conditions require you to have a food diary and there might be a connection between specific food and symptoms. And that's just fascinating to me um, that I can do something that can help people le live better lives, not just plan better. Um, it's just another level for me. Um, and I want to try that. I will not quit that. So as for time management, uh, yes, it's getting, it's getting really hard. Um, right now I, um, I killed everything I could. I'm focusing on mar marketing. I'm trying to uh, outsource everything I can to um, to my wife and to an assistant that I have. Um, and this year is the year of marketing for me, 100%, because th this is something I naturally suck at. And that's that was the missing piece for Brick. And um, the ventures that I launched in 2023, and uh, I'm not having that anymore. Um, I need to get serious about this, um, and that's that's one reason I I I, um, I bought um, Justin Walsh's Creator MBA course uh, just recently, um, and it's been like with any course, you have to be at at the at just the right stage for it to be useful to you. And uh, this just hit, hit the spot for me. Um, I got like the, the exact marketing um, tools that I needed uh, to finally start making some decent money. And hopefully this succeeds and I can still make those four businesses work while still enjoying building new tools, but I just make those new tools serve the existing ones. So for example, for indie plans, I'm building um, a free MVP planner where you basically just talk, tell me what you want to build and who your target audience is and what resources you have. Like I have $200 and one person who, who's not a coder. Okay. We'll just give you an MVP, like all the details, what to build, what not to build for free. And that'll be a lead magnet for indie plans. And then, for example, for PromptNick, I want to build a, a prompt crafter, an AI that you just tell it, um, I want my AI to do this and that. Um, I'm like, okay, here's your prompt. Because learning prompt engineering is takes a long time. You probably don't want to do it, especially if you're, for example, if you're a marketer, your job is marketing, not prompt writing. and it takes writing prompts take takes a long time and learning that takes even more time and you don't want that. So here's a tool for you that will fall nicely into the promptnik space. And then it can serve as a lead magnet, even if paid for my larger personalized prompts for AI, AI apps service, which promptnik is right now. Um, so I still satisfy my inner desire to build. I just channel it more correctly than I used to so that it serves uh, a marketing purpose for the tools that I already have so that I stay focused. Nice. So you're keeping everything basically in kind of one funnel at that point. Yeah, that's the idea. 
Well, it remains to be seen awesome. if it actually works, but that's <laughs> that's how I imagine. Well, it. it's all a work in progress, so that's that's all that really matters. But um, no, that's awesome, man. I'm really really happy to 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 hear that. What um, so what tools? Let me ask you kind of a probably one of the last questions uh, I'll get out here. What tools are you primarily using right now? Uh, are you using primarily ChatGPT? Are you using like Webflow are using Framer. Like, what are some of the tools that you can share that you know somebody may be interested in? From you know, a lot of the people probably listening to the podcast, or some of them, I should say, are probably not developers and people that are going to go out and build custom stuff. Like, what do you use at the moment that helps you kind of move a little bit faster? Mm -hmm. uh, so I use I use ChatGPT. Um, I I try I occasionally use Claude. Uh, by Anthropic, uh, but I, I really find it much, uh, much less smart, um, and just it just doesn't hit the mark uh, most of the time for me. And, but I, I I find myself uh, working with um, the vanilla Chat GPT less and less, and instead uh, making GPTs um, because those are a little bit more flexible and uh, most of them are private, but at some point if I decide to make them public, then I just make them public and use them as lead magnets or just help people for free. And I, I already have like five or six GPTs that are public. Um, so, uh, but there's a major limitation with chat GPT is that um, with, with GPTs, I'm sorry, uh, is that, for some reason, it only allows prompts that are um, no longer than 8,000 characters. And I increasingly find myself writing uh, extremely long prompts because if you want really good quality, then um, 8,000 characters will not do a lot of the time. So for example, uh, for for indie plans, um, the, the key prompt that I use that actually writes the business plan uh, it's like three times longer than 8,000 characters. But fortunately, I use Assistance API from OpenAI, uh, which you don't have to know code for as well to use if you use it with make.com. So in make.com, you can stitch together various tools, uh, including Assistance API that People don't use that much if they're not coders because they are scared by the API name. <laughs> but if you use make.com, you don't have to know the first thing about coding. You can just use it. And there's no limitation on how how long your um, prompt is. At least I haven't hit it uh, as yet. So use make.com uh, for indie plans. Um, like indie plans is, is just a huge 26 step. Uh, make.com automation that stitches together a few AI tools um, to get market research, then to write the prompt, to check the prompt, to criticize the prompt, and then make the prompt better um, with various inputs. Uh, and then I use Framer a lot. Uh, Framer is, uh, is a huge revelation for me. Uh, I, I just started using it in, in October. And I've already built uh, five landing pages with it. Uh, never start it from scratch. Um, use templates and indie plans. Uh, I built a landing page in just two days um, without being a designer uh, and not knowing the first thing about um, you know, how to build uh, landing pages as a developer. Um, and I use it for all kinds of unexpected things like uh, I made screenshots for Brick's um, App Store listing with Framer uh, just because designing uh, designing stunning graphics, uh, landing pages, anything with Framer is so easy um, that I don't, I don't need like anything else uh, to do things that require design. Well, I'm not talking about logos or illustrations, of course. Uh, those things are just a different space. Um, and 
one of the tools that I use is Zapier, but uh, I use it less and less, really. Um, I found make.com better uh, uh, for for tools. Uh, but Zapier just released tables and interfaces. And, and interfaces, you can, you can build whole apps. Uh, I haven't tried that. I, I tried tables, and I... I now have all my content uh, that I publish. As it publishes to Twitter or LinkedIn, it goes there from Typefully. Uh, so that I, I automatically build a, a database of my content there. But interfaces should be much more powerful. Uh, haven't tried it, but it can replace Bubble in a lot of cases, uh, as far as I can tell. It just has, it's less flexible, less less designy, uh, but it's, it's a first step. And uh, I started using Bubble just recently to build um, uh, a lead magnet free free tool, the MVP planner that I mentioned for indie plans. But then I found myself um, doing a lot of uh, marketing, and my wife kind of took over. She um, she's the one building that tool in Bubble right now. She's way ahead of me, and I expect that I will not. I'll be um, diving into Bubble all that much. I, I'll just outsource it to her because she's um, so much better uh, at this point. And she, she has uh, built that tool uh, like 80% already. And <laughs> I'll just won't double with it just to stay focused on what I can do better and let her do her thing instead. Nice. I love that. I love that. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. That's a good set of tools. And I, uh, uh, I think that there's a lot of value in being able to stitch things together and kind of, you know, duct tape certain things together that actually work for the long term and you don't have to go out and build anything like custom or anything like that. So, yeah. um, no, this is, this is awesome. I, I appreciate you sharing all of that about yourself and about your journey and what you've uh, been doing. And is there anything else you uh, you want to mention before we kind of wrap up here? Um, maybe let people know where to follow you or anything like that. I'll also have it in the show notes, but feel free to let people know where to find your products, your social media, and anything else. Sure. Thank you. Um, you can find me on Twitter and LinkedIn. Uh, I started on LinkedIn just recently, and I started making videos there and on Twitter as well. And my plan for now is just to keep showing people like myself who can't code, who are not designers, who uh, don't know much about um, app creation or business in general, that they can build whole tools, whole apps right now with what they have on the shoestring without being experts in pretty much anything. Uh, you just need a good idea and you need the right tools and you need to stay simple and focused. And I intend to show exactly how. And if you want that, um, I'll, I'll, I'll make it super clear and very, very um, accessible for you. So welcome. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, Nikita, um, it was great chatting with you, um, uh, and uh, we will definitely keep in touch. I wish you the best of luck with all your ventures. Um, I love seeing everything you're building. I love rooting for you and seeing all the all the stuff you keep putting out, and you just keep taking shots. And uh, I think the first time you and I chatted, I remember telling you just like, you know, you gotta you gotta keep doing that. And I think you've been you've been sticking with your with your plan. So. Um, major, major props to you, man. And I hope you uh, continue to crush it. And as always, if you ever need anything, you let me know and I'm happy to help. Thank you, Zlatko. Appreciate the opportunity and I'll do the same for you. Cheers. Have a good one. Thanks. Bye.